Hello everyone and welcome to Rimsling 101 where we're going to dive deep into all the uses behind the Rimsling. What is the Rimsling? The Rimsling is a synthetic sling offered in multiple sizes. This particular one is a three quarter inch, eight foot long. It's offered in multiple sizes, multiple lengths to fit your needs. And what this is designed to do is to be fed through a rim of a vehicle and you are able to pull on that vehicle using this sling. Now as we'll learn, this sling, although it is called the rim sling, it can be used in many other applications. Now the rim sling is a synthetic sling comprised of two eyes on either end. Internally, this is a synthetic braided rope that is comprised of a Cordova layer on the outside to protect from individual marring and then in the very inside which is kind of hard to show but there is a braid inside that's a additional layer on top of the red braid that you saw there that's the part dead center in the middle of the sling that's allowing this sling to not experience any damage when used properly when this rim sling is fed through a rim all the load that's applied from pulling on the rim is put on this internal layer of additional protection to allow you to pull on the rim without any damage to the sling itself now just to give you a idea of how strong this particular sling is like i said this is the three quarter inch eight foot long and this particular sling is rated at a five to one safety factor in a vertical configuration, meaning straight up and down, you're rated at 13,700 pounds. In a choker configuration, meaning that you run this eye through the other eye and choke something, that's rated at 10,960 pounds. And then in a true basket, you're rated at 27,400 pounds. So as you can see, this sling is quite strong and it's going to allow us to do a lot of different things with this sling. So the purpose of this series is to show operators and users of this rim sling just how versatile this sling is. We're going to work our way through many scenarios in the real world that I'm gonna to put together to show you guys how this rim sling can be used. All the links for this product will be included in the description. This particular sling was purchased at Zips AW Direct. Be sure to check them out. That's where the link's gonna send you. That's where you can get these. So hopefully you guys enjoy this series. I am looking forward to it and let's go ahead and dive right into this. All right guys, this is rim sling demo number two. We're gonna make up a scenario here in which we are towing a vehicle that has a low bumper or low oil pan and has no way of uh, picking it from the front. In this particular case, this truck does have pinholes in the bumper, but we're gonna picture that it is a nice like Texas square bumper that does not have any holes in it for demonstration purposes. That way we can demonstrate how to use rim slings to pick up the front of a truck and tow it. So let's go ahead and get that started. First, let's, I guess, put that through. Set a glove. All right, so front axle should be pretty simple. We already got the other side done, right? Yeah. Cool. All right, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, the holes on this one are pretty pretty big, so it should be all right. Try to leave something on the other end, that'd be... Sweet, just like that. We're gonna make sure that the protective layer inside is touching the rim which it is, it's right there, so perfect. Now we're gonna need two shackles, very important. I'll grab them, Alex. Wrong box. There you go, I'll do it on this side. Yeah, that's actually an important note though. So guys, notice here how we have this one offset. The way the truck lays, the valve stems at the top, and obviously we do not want to run the rim sling through the valve stem. It'll break that right off. So keep in mind when you guys are feeding your rim slings to uh, figure out where your valve stem is and do not touch it. All right. My side's set. Yeah, we'll have to climb up there. Get the hooks undone. Okay, let me 
gonna grab the remote. All right, so if you wanna just hold on to your side and I'll hold on to my side, that way it doesn't get away from us. But we'll go ahead. This one? Yep, should be, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll boom out. Let me boom up some to get up over the hood. Uh, Roberto is going to Glen Helen for cat. Yeah, they called last night at like 11 for an emergency move. All right, we're obviously gonna be careful with the hood. We're not gonna touch the hood at all. That's why the hood's open. Otherwise we would hit the hood. We're gonna wanna get centered over. Good there? Yep. All right. Are you hooked in? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What? Say again, sorry. <laughs> said are you hooked down i said it will be oh. <laughs> um let's go ahead and flip that though yeah that way we just practice that um so while he's doing that i want to talk about why the rim sling is superior to other methods of doing this so typically what you do before the rim sling is you would run something around the axle um, and while that can work you'll notice that there's a lot of components here such as hoses and clamps and plastic that you could end up crushing as you're uh, lifting. So the rim sling allows for proper spacing. So we're gonna be completely away from all the engine components and we're not gonna do any damage. Um, so that's why, in my opinion, the rim sling is the best way to do things. So, sounds like Alex locked in the winches for me. Yes? Yes, sir. All right, now another thing that we should do while we're not lifting very heavy weight, we should always just set down the rear uh, outriggers just set them down we don't have to extend them and then even though we're not rotating we should always unlock the boom that way if for whatever reason we overload one side slightly than the other we're not putting the pressure on the pin we're putting the pressure on the ring gear so let's go ahead and work the white up check that out make sure we like that that looks pretty good to me. We're not hitting anything. Go to the other side. We're pretty dang centered there. Now we'll go blue. This side, we're gonna lift until it rotates centered, which it will. Even though the brakes are set on a tractor, the front brakes don't have any effect on that. Those are only service brakes, not parking brakes. So this should just rotate here, like so. Boom. All right, I say we're good to lift. What about you? Look good? Um, the cameras are on that side, so we'll stand on this side. All right, up we go. There we go. So as you can see, that came up real quick. We're lifted up, and that's pretty good. Tires may turn on you a little bit, but that's all right not going to do any damage all right so now that it's up and out of the way what we can do is we, we have two options uh, if you were in an integrated truck meaning your boom is not separate from your underlift like our other 35 tons it'd probably be easier to set it down on blocks and then work with it like that but in our case we have an independent underlift meaning that this is completely separate from the boom so it's just a matter of extending it out to the axle, which we can demonstrate here. That was a good guess. All right, so now what we can do is, well, we can do it two ways. We can come up to it or we can set it down. We'll come up to it a bit just to make sure we're lined up and then we'll set it in. 
Oh, it might need to come in just a touch. So we'll do that. No, that side was good. This, it was just this side. All right, so our goal when we're towing, if you, ha if you don't know, is we're getting in between the two U-bolts on the front axle. So what we'll do is we'll go up to it, we'll secure it, and then we'll uh, release tension off the boom onto the uh, underlift. Now, if you guys are curious, the front end of this truck weighs approximately 10,000 pounds according to our load scale. More than capable for all the rigging and the boom extension that we have. So now we'll just cable down, and that is going to transfer the load onto our underlift. There we go, just like that. Now we're ready to tow. All right guys, well that there is how you would use rim slings to lift a low bumper, low clearance uh, vehicle without tow pins on the front. Uh, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, and the rim slings really do make it a damage-free solution to lifting, and uh, it's very easy. With that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.